I remember when I got the original Pokemon Snap cartridge on Nintendo 64, and slapped that bad boy into Nintendo's latest console. I spent the day exploring beaches, caves, and forests, trying to find every little nuanced trick for the very best picture. Using the Poke Flute to make Meowth dance, luring Pikachu to the surfboard, and getting three Jigglypuffs to perform a concert, I knew all of the ins and outs of the game and every trick to be found. 22 years later, Nintendo has revisited the IP with new Pokemon Snap, and I had to know whether or not the game had taken the time to evolve with love and care, or if it was a simple cash grab while we wait for the next mainline Pokemon game. New Pokemon Snap is a first-person rail shooter, except instead of shooting guns, you're taking a far more serene approach and trying to photograph Pokemon in their natural habitat. Players will travel across the Lintel region, aboard an upgraded version of the Neo 1, the very same device used in the original game. In fact, Todd, the photographer from the first game, returns with plenty of helpful tips and guides on how to get the best pictures. You'll pick your stage and be dropped into the lush environment. The Neo 1 will constantly move on a preset path towards the end of the level. These stages last around 5 minutes, but feel much faster with a wide array of incredible things to see and do. Pokemon as a franchise has expanded to gargantuan proportions in the last 22 years. With hundreds of Pokemon in the series, Nintendo had plenty of options of who to cram into every stage. So much so, that it is guaranteed you'll be replaying every area for hours to snap up those great photo ops that you missed the first time around. Sometimes you'll need to manipulate the situation to encourage new behavior. So the more you play, you'll unlock items that let you interact in different ways. The Fluff Fruit, the Lumina Orbs, and the Melody Player. Each of these items had a similar counterpart in the original game, so it's no surprise to see them return. While their applications and purposes are solid, they each felt a little underwhelming in practice. Fluff Fruit is a snack to lure Pokemon. They will approach it to eat, often getting you a very happy picture, but it can also be used to lure them to an object to interact with. You can also use it to boop them, making them angry or dazed. It's a great and simple tool, but Pokemon take a long time to pursue the fluff fruit, and the arc in which they are thrown has no real weight and floats more than falls. Considering you don't have the option to stop moving, there are some photos you need to just wildly fire fluff fruit at the wildest angle possible, and hope it's helping you get the Pokemon in position for a decent picture down the path. If it had a bit more weight and speed or a projected arc display, it would make for some far superior planned shots that don't feel rushed and haphazard. Illumina orbs need to be unlocked for each region in the game, and burst on impact, similar to the original game's Pester Ball. These illuminate the Pokemon and can sometimes produce new effects for pictures. It's a matter of trial and error to see what works, but I found that more often than not, it didn't do much but make the Pokemon glow, which wasn't worth a whole lot of points. Finally, we have the Melody Player. This replaces the Poke Flute and plays a short tune which can awaken sleeping Pokemon, make some of them dance, or just infuriate them. It's another fun way to test the Pokemon and see what they will do, but it's always the exact same melody over and over and over again. In the original Pokemon Snap, the Poke Flute played a few different tunes as you would be using it constantly, but here it's just one tune, and it quickly burrows in your brain in an intrusive way. Your camera is equipped with a scanner to find clues and hidden Pokemon in the environment. The electrical signal from the scan can have an effect on Pokemon, giving you a ton of options for different photos. It sounds great, but now there's a frenzied cluster of button mashing to see what happens with every new encounter. 
you round a corner to discover a pincer staring at you. You can't slow down or stop the Neo 1. So you've got around 15 to 20 seconds to get a reaction and decent picture before he is out of range. Run the scan, play the melody, toss an Illumina orb, and throw it some food. Did you hit the pincer or did it land in front of it? Is it angry or hungry now? Which of all those things made that reaction happen? You can of course stick to one or two of these until you play the level again, but while you're focused on that pincer, I guarantee you missed something behind you, and you'll need to replay this stage multiple times just to see what pincer will do. Each stage can be leveled up based on the experience points you get from Professor Mirror when showing him your photos. As the stage levels up, new Pokemon appear. They start behaving differently and interacting in new and unique ways, with some stages having day and nighttime variants. This not only extended the longevity of the game, since the original Pokemon Snap was less than 10 stages, but it also allows for more opportunities to include Pokemon across their daunting catalog of monsters. Some of these changes and interactions are truly adorable, and it creates a sense of anticipation to unlock the next level and see what they will do next. When taking your photos to Professor Mirror, each one qualifies as 1 to 4 stars, depending on the action of the subject. You can only submit one photo per Pokemon after each stage, which is then rated for size, positioning, actions, and other features. What qualifies as an acceptable photo is much more lenient this time around, as Professor Oak used to be incredibly strict and fail photos for not having a Pokemon's face or being centered. Professor Mirror, on the other hand, will accept almost anything. Every Pokemon in the photo decks has space for four photos, one for each star rating. If you happen to only take pictures of what you think will be an amazing four star photo, you might have a tough time breaking that habit and trying to take, well, a crummy basic one star photo just to fill the page. New Pokemon Snap takes everything the original game did right and only adds onto the original successful formula. It is beautiful and relaxing, while being frantic and fun. There's an almost overload of things to see and do on each stage, with plenty of challenges to complete. Seeing your favorite Pokemon come to life is an absolute treat, but making the game bigger and better while adding certain limitation feels like a recipe for artificial longevity. With so much going on at any given time and imperfect means of interacting with the Pokemon, Coupled with the ability to submit only one photo per outing, per Pokemon at a time, New Pokemon Snap is asking you to complete dozens of perfect runs per stage to fill the photo decks. While the repetitive nature might be just fine for kids, this game may be better in short burst for adults and perfectionists.